Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode about Mega Projects. This one is the Amber Room. I kind of was debating whether this is actually a Mega Project, but whether it is or not, it's super cool. I first heard about this because I really like the TV show White Collar, which ended a few years ago, but it was really awesome. And they had this music box, which was like the MacGuffin in the story for, I don't know how many seasons, but it came from this Amber Room. Enough waffling about all TV shows, let's just dive in. It is a story with more than a little Indiana Jones to it. A tale of dazzling, priceless treasures looted by the Nazis. A mystery that to this day remains unsolved. You can see why it's popular in TV shows. The beauty and uniqueness of the Amber Room led some to dub it the eighth wonder of the world. It was an astonishing set of treasures. But the big question is, where are they now? This is a little different than we normally do here on Mega Projects, but it is a fascinating story of what might well have been one of the most visually stunning rooms that the world has ever known. Constructed in Prussia in the 18th century, it was eventually given as a gift to the Tsar of Russia in 1716 when it was placed into Catherine Palace of Sarsoya Salo near St. Petersburg. In its final location, it covered 55 square meters, that's 590 square feet, and contained over six tons of amber, along with priceless amounts of gold leaves and gemstones. It was a truly opulent yet spectacular arrangement of art. But as we know, anything so enticing is sure to fall under greedy gazers. In October 1941, the Amber Room was stripped bare, making it simply a room, we guess, and the artwork was shipped to Germany, where it found a new home in Konigsberg Castle. This was Germany at the time, but is today Kaliningrad in Russia, that tiny part of Russia which stands on its own. Bit of bizarre geography fact there. But as 1945 developed, the noose slightly tightened as Allied and Soviet forces approached from all sides. We don't know when or where the treasures of the Amber Room were moved to, and it remains a tantalizing mystery that has enthralled many since the end of World War II. There are plenty of theories, but you'll have to keep watching to learn about those. Work began on the Amber Room over 300 years ago in 1701. It was said that Frederick, the first king of Prussia, was urged by his second wife, Sophia Charlotte, to commission an artwork that would entice people for hundreds of years to come to Prussia. It was designed by Andreas Schulte, a German Baroque sculptor and architect, but it was constructed by Gottfried Wolfram, master craftsman to the Danish court of King Frederick IV of Denmark, but he was aided in the vast undertaking by Amber Masters Ernst Schnacht and Gottfried Tural from Danzig, a city in modern-day Poland. Now, we don't see a whole lot of amber these days. I think I last saw it in Jurassic Park, but it was widely used for jewelry dating back over 13,000 years. It was traditionally seen as a way of protecting the wearer, warding off evil spirits, and curing disease. Of course, the past was weird. In Europe, an amber necklace was commonly used to alleviate teething problems and excessive crying in babies and small children. I have a baby. He's nine months old right now. Can't imagine that working at all because, well, obviously it doesn't. Just in case anybody's about to rush out and buy some amber, no one was about to do that. There is absolutely no evidence to suggest this works. We know. Anyway, back to our story. The art was first intended for Charlottenburg Palace, the official royal residence, but was instead installed in the Berlin City Palace. Here, it soon caught the eye of a hugely influential visiting royal. On a visit to the palace, Peter the Great, Tsar of Russia, was greatly taken by the artwork on display. By this point, King Frederick had died, and the throne had passed to Frederick William I. The young king was eager to impress the Tsar, but also to cement an alliance between Prussia and Russia against that hated, tyrannical country known as Sweden. Sensing his opportunity, the Prussian king presented the artwork as a gift to the Tsar, which certainly sweetened the deal. The artwork made its way to Russia in 1716, loaded in 18 large boxes, and was was first installed at the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg as part of the hugely impressive European art collection. In 1755, Tsarina Elizabeth ordered it to be moved to Catherine Palace, where the royal family would typically spend the summer months. At this point, the artwork was still a long way off from the finished article. Over time, it was slowly added to, but it also needed to be adapted to its new surroundings, which was much more spacious. The room began to slowly take shape under the guidance of Italian designer Bartolomeo Francesco Rastrelli, who brought in additional amber from Berlin to add significantly more panels. It was an enormous undertaking, and it took 10 years to construct, but the results 
were simply breathtaking. It covered a size of 55 square meters, which might not sound enormous, but with six tons of amber covering walls and the ceiling, it must have been dazzling to stand within it. Modern price estimates for this extraordinary little room range from $200 million to $500 million in today's currency. It's thought that the room was primarily used as a private meditation room for Tsarina Elizabeth and later a meeting room for Catherine the Great. No doubt when the Russian royal family wanted to wow visitors, it was here that they got brought. The room also included statues of angels and children along with mirrors. The use of candlelight in the room was designed to give the impression of a vast amount of light that bounced back and forth across the amber and the mirrors. After Hitler broke the German-Soviet non-aggression pact and initiated Operation Barbarossa, three million German troops began storming across the Russian border. Early attempts to halt their progress were chaotic and hopeless as the relentless German machine, which had torn through Europe, now tore through Russian soil. The Germans had already plundered Europe of all of its art, with as many as 650,000 individual pieces looted, many of which were never returned. In fact, the German theft of art was so widespread that it has its own name, the Raubkunst. It soon became clear that the Red Army would not be able to hold the Germans at bay before substantial gains had been made into Russia, and as they neared Leningrad, St. Petersburg had its name changed to Petrograd after World War I, then to Leningrad in 1924, and then back to St. Petersburg in 1991, some difficult decisions needed to be made. Our curators in the city had already begun the process of packing up the city's most valuable pieces to be sent to areas far from the front lines, but the Amber Room at this point was not simply artwork hung on a wall. The room itself was the treasure that needed to be saved. Attempts were made to slowly disassemble the amber panels, but over time they had dried out significantly and now lay in brittle shape. To forcibly remove the amber risked destroying it in the process. A horrible dilemma now confronted the curators. Potentially damage the art by moving it or try to mask it and hope for the best. Whoever was in charge went with a second option. The room was covered with bland wallpaper in the hope that soldiers searching the palace might not realize the magnitude of what lay behind the dull color. The Siege of Leningrad has gone down as one of the costliest battles of the entire war. Knowing that they had little chance of successfully occupying and holding the city, the Germans instead opted for encirclement and a military blockade. In short, they were going to starve them out. The horrors of Leningrad lasted 872 days before it was lifted by Soviet troops on January 27, 1944. Over a million Soviet soldiers had been killed and nearly 650,000 civilian lives were lost. As the German army retreated, they laid waste to Catherine Palace, destroying it almost entirely. But by this point, the treasures of the Amber Room were long gone. The mundane wallpaper that the curators had hoped might be enough to deceive had failed. The Nazis were meticulous in the art that they were searching for, and no doubt they knew what to look for. Shortly after the siege of Leningrad had begun, German soldiers, along with specialists, had arrived at Catherine Palace and disassembled everything in just 36 hours. On the 14th of October 1941, the contents of the room reached Konigsberg, present-day Kalingrad in Russia, intended for display in the town's castle. A month later, a Konigsberg newspaper gave the announcement that the Amber Room would be exhibited at Konigsberg Castle. And this is where the story begins to get a little bit hazy. In just a few years, the tables had turned, and it was now the Soviets' turn to storm across German territory. Hitler ordered the removal of all art from Konigsberg, but this time it was utterly chaotic. The area was heavily bombed by Allied aircraft and then again by Soviet artillery as the Red Army neared the town. On the 9th of April 1945, Konigsberg fell to Soviet forces, but the contents of the Amber Room had disappeared. Let me just say from the start here, there's going to be a lot of ifs, buts, and maybes in this section. The mystery of what happened to the prized artifacts has enthralled and baffled people for 75 years and counting. What we do know is that the contents have never been seen in public again. Some believe that it was loaded onto a submarine during the final days before the Red Army arrived and may have been torpedoed before it got to its destination. Others have argued that, in fact, the artwork did not survive the bombardments and was entirely destroyed in the process. In 2004, British investigative journalists Catherine Scott Clark and Adrian Levy released a report supporting this theory. A Soviet assessment done after the war stated that, summarizing all the facts, we can say that the Amber Room was 
destroyed between the 9th and the 11th of April 1945, which corresponds with the end of the battle. However, years later, Alexander Brusov, who authored the assessment, reversed his decision. We then get into the murky area of did the Soviets know that they had destroyed the Amber Room, then backtracked because they didn't want to be blamed for it. An Italian stone mosaic, which had been a part of a set of four stones decorating the Amber Room, was found in 1997. Discovered in Germany, it was in the possession of the family of a soldier who had claimed to have been part of the team who had packed up the Amber Room contents. The soldier had since died, so could not shed any further light on the subject. Some residents of the area have said that, in fact, parts of the Amber Room were found by the Red Army in Konigsberg Castle cellars in surprisingly good condition after the final battle, but they couldn't elaborate on what happened next. The ruins of the castle were later mysteriously and hastily closed to the public and researchers. Then, in 1968, Soviet Premier Leonid Brezhnev ordered the destruction of Konigsberg Castle and, with it, the last remaining hope of a full investigation. I don't know about you, but it does seem as if there's something fishy going on here. Over the years, there have been numerous high hopes that have been dashed. In 1998, a German team thought they had found the Amber Room hidden in an old silver mine, while a team from Lithuania were adamant that it lay at the bottom of a lagoon. Both were wrong. Recently, the focus has fallen on a bunker in Mamerki in northeastern Poland, but again, the trail has gone cold. Over time, it became clear that the mystery of the Amber Room may never be solved, and with it came the decision to build a replica. It was a process that began in 1979 and took an astonishing 24 years to complete, involving a collaboration between both German and Soviet Amber craftsmen. No color photos exist of the Amber Room, so black and white photos were used and then painstakingly added to with 350 shades of amber until researchers believed that they had the correct style. The new Amber Room was completed in 2003 at a cost of $11 million and was dedicated by both Russian President Vladimir Putin and German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder on the 300th anniversary of St. Petersburg. There's something truly tantalizing about lost treasure. The idea that the contents of the Amber Room could be hidden in an abandoned mine or even in a disused cellar somewhere is almost enough to strap on the Indiana Jones hat, clamp that whip to your waist, and set out for yourself. The Amber Room was undoubtedly one of the most astonishing collections of artwork that the world has ever seen. As I mentioned earlier, this wasn't simply pieces of art hung on a wall. The room itself became a glowing beauty. Its creation was delicate and painstaking, a true testament to a style of craftsmanship that we're sadly losing. The real Amber Room may well never be found again. It may not even exist if the Allied bombs and artillery were as destructive as some say. But until we have a definitive answer either way, the mystery of the sumptuous Amber Room will continue to excite and certainly frustrate. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, smash that thumbs up button below. If you've got a suggestion for mega projects, I know this one was a little bit different, a little bit off the wall, well, please do leave them below. If they get lots of upvotes, I tend to make them. So please do that, and thank you for watching.